Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here. Are you interested in recording your video footage from your Steam Deck, but don't have an external PC or an expensive capture card? All you want to do is record some video, upload it to YouTube, share it with your friends. We might just have the device for you. Stick around. All right, so let's get started. So here's the device itself. You're probably going to need some other stuff. You might need a hub or something to output HDMI from the Steam Deck. You can even use one of these little pigtail kind of guys from USB-C to HDMI. Um, but yeah, I mean, you probably already have a hub if you're looking to do this. You're also probably gonna wanna have a better flash drive and a bigger flash drive than the one that comes with it. So let's go ahead and open the box and see what we've got in here. Here's the Here's the device itself, along with a proprietary power source, that kind of sucks, and the 32 gigabyte USB stick. And that's it. Little instruction manual in there, you won't need it. Okay, yeah, I would have rather had like USB powered, but listen, uh, it probably needs more juice than that's gonna power up, so we'll have to deal with the proprietary thing. It almost looks like a little TV, doesn't it? It looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, it looks slick, it looks sleek, it's small. It's also a huge fingerprint magnet, bad call on that. Power in, headset and microphone jack for overlays and then input and output of HDMI along with the USB port to plug in your flash or storage drive. There's no actual buttons on here, that's a capacitive button in the middle, but we're gonna get a better look at that in just a minute. All in all, an attractive little device outside of the fingerprints and I'm excited to see what this thing can do, 1080p or 720 with a short press and record with a long press. Seems easy enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this in our Steam Deck environment. As you can see, when you power up, the little light comes on in the middle and we get a little blue bar at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and put the HDMI out going to my portable monitor there on the upper right. And we're gonna need uh, some sort of an HDMI cable not included in the box to plug into my video source, in this case, the Steam Deck. So I've got a little short HDMI cable. Hopefully you have an extra HDMI cable laying around. Most people tend to have that, so. Okay, so we're gonna plug this all in. There we go, and okay. That should be it. So let's go ahead and get this all in a nice comfortable position here, and we'll fire it up and do our first test. Okay, so we wake the deck up. And if all goes well, the video output of the deck will pass through the capture device and out to the monitor. And as you can see, it's showing up as 720p because that's what it's showing on the monitor. Now, I was kind of hoping it would kick over to 1080p out there, but it, it isn't. Let's go ahead and insert my SanDisk USB flash drive. I don't trust the other flash drive that came with it. And so I'm trying to tap it to get it to change over to 1080p, but that's not working. So let's go ahead and start recording. You can see we get a blue bar that shows activity, writing activity to the card on the bottom. Let's go ahead and play a little. And I'm gonna speed up the capture part of this because nobody wants to sit here and watch me play. We're gonna look at this video again later anyway. Once we're done with our capture, we'll go ahead and long press that button and it will finish up its writing job blinks a little bit, changes, and then it's done. Cool. Now, what we really want to do, of course, is take this video and upload it to YouTube or put it up somewhere else. So what we want to do is be able to take this drive right off of here and plug it right back into the deck. Now, I've got a dual flipper here. I could just plug it into the USB-C port at the top, but since I've got a flipper here, I'm going to go ahead and use the USB-A if I can actually find the hole. There we go. And I should be able to hop right into desktop mode, open up Dolphin, and see that USB device and watch the video. And I'm gonna open it in VLC. And there it is down there. Let me bring it up to the big screen here if I can actually grab the window and do it. There we go. Okay. So there's the playback from the 720p capture. And obviously you can't really tell much right from this type of a camera angle and everything, but it looks, it's effective. And we didn't need a PC at all. We didn't need an external computer. We didn't need a Windows computer. We didn't need OBS. We didn't need anything. We just plugged this little device in between the deck and the video and we're good. 
All right, so let's see about doing 1080p capture. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell Steam that I want this running in 1080p. I'm using the game resolution override in the general area of the program's properties. And hopefully now when we run the game, we'll actually have the monitor kick into 1080p and we'll be able to record in 1080p. Now I'm gonna assume that I won't see that until the actual game video shows up and then maybe it'll flip. Mm, no, I'm gonna try to change, no. Okay, so no 1080p with this setup. So I gotta be missing something. So what's the, what's the secret, what's the trick? Uh, maybe you can change it in game. That didn't work out either. So uh, instead of going through the whole troubleshooting scenario, you might have come here trying to get this exact answer. So what we're going to do instead is uh, show you the right way to do this, which requires that we go off to desktop mode. Okay, so the solution here is to go to desktop mode and force desktop mode to output the external display under the display properties, we're going to force it instead of being a mirror or being an extended monitor of the 720p persuasion, we are going to go ahead and force it into the correct persuasion, which is 1080p. Notice on the primary screen, we don't have the right settings. So we have to go to the external screen. That might've fooled somebody. It got me for a second. And we need to go to 1080p here. Okay, so now we'll apply and if all goes well, the capture system will change over to 1080p as well. And bang, there we go. All right. So now we'll go ahead and start the game. And obviously it's trying now to play on the internal screen or the built-in screen. I'm assuming we're going to have to go into settings and change that out to be going to the other quote monitor, the second monitor, default monitor two, however it might be labeled there. And hopefully once the video is exported over to the external screen in 1080p. Yes. Excellent. Okay, so now we're in 1080p. We have the ability to capture in 1080p. I think we're now ready to go ahead and uh, do a little gameplay. Yes, the Stadia controller has a problem. I don't know what it is about controlling the mouse cursor, but it doesn't like it. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're in 1080p. We'll long press this guy to begin recording. And you can see the recording methodology is definitely happening as it should be. Once again, we'll speed this video up for you so you don't have to sit here and watch me capture. Um, but we'll do something similar, a little bit shorter than the last one. Right? And I fell off the edge and I died. So let's go ahead and stop the capture. Make sure it finishes up. It's blinking and we're good. Okay, so now let's take a look at this 720p capture. Now... Uh, this is 60 frames per second, both 720 and 1080p are 60 frames per second. And uh, I'm not scaling it, I'm not bringing it up, I'm not altering it. What you see is the exact 720p video that was captured. I will give you links so you can download both the 720 and the 1080p raw file so that you can see it yourself, not having gone through a second processing and not being shown at 4K, but crunched, you know, none of that's nonsense. We're gonna make sure that you can get the actual video files themselves and see them, the quality of the capture, for yourself. For now, let's go ahead and just let this video play out. There's a duration, and of course, use the chapter jumps to jump ahead if you've seen enough and you want to just move on to the next piece. let's move on to 1080p capture. It's a little bit bigger, <laughs> still 4K. 1080p in a 4K screen, it's still fairly small. But let's go ahead and we'll run around and you can watch this video as well. This one's a little shorter. Again, if you would rather watch the raw videos, please just grab those from the description below and you'll be able to watch these in all of their <laughs> glory, if you will. 
and me not talking over them. How about that? So we'll come back and talk a little bit more towards the end of the video. Incendio. Okay, as you can see, it's actually fairly impressive. I'm pretty pleased with this. Let's talk some technical stuff now, shall we? For you techie people, let's look at the video and the audio. For video, we have 1080p at 30 frames per second, 720p at 60 frames per second, MPEG-4 is the container, H.264 is the codec, AVC-1, uh, part 10, bitrate at 1080p is 16,000, bitrate at 720 is 13,000. Now we go on to the audio, which is 189 kilobytes per second, which I thought was a really weird number. Technically, it's probably 190, which should please a lot of people because a lot of these um, cheaper type solutions only record like in, you know, 128 or something crappy like that. Two-channel stereo, uh, 48,000 kilohertz versus 44, which is kind of nice, so better than CD quality audio. So that's pretty cool as well. So let's talk about some practical details you need to know. Uh, about five hours of recording on the th included 32 gigabyte stick. With FAT32, you're gonna have a two gigabyte split between files, which can make them kind of hard to work with. NTFS, you get unlimited file size, and the card that's included, the flash drive, is NTFS out of the box. If you wanna add your own, you're gonna need to make sure it's formatted in NTFS. Uh, it is a 12 volt, one amp proprietary power source, which means you're not gonna be able to plug probably a battery into it to power it on the go. So you're gonna to wanna to carry the adapter with you. As a reminder, this is a recording device, not a live streaming device. So if live streaming is what you're looking for, this probably isn't it. Um, and you cannot use it without external video. So you can't just plug it in without plugging a monitor or TV in on the output and just play it on the deck itself. So you do have to have that external video source, which could prove to be a problem for some folks. Okay, so what do I think? Um, I think this would be great for a lot of people. The price is right, it's under $70. It's very attractive, it goes along with you. It can be used on your PC, your consoles, your Steam Deck. It can be used for a myriad of options. The only thing that I would say is probably a negative note on here would be the 1080p 30. I would have preferred that it would capture at 60. And last but not least, the proprietary connector. I know it needs more juice to do its job, but carrying around yet another weird custom proprietary power brick is not my idea of fun. But outside of that, I think this is a great little device. And for those who are looking to dip their toe into the world of sharing their media content from the Steam Deck, this looks like a pretty good solution. I'm Shane Armand Rowe. Appreciate you watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the little bell. You guys know what to do. Leave a comment, blah, blah, blah. Of course, you're appreciated. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.